Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We got a new issue of the Charles Soule Star Wars comic series, and it was a really fun issue with some craziness sprinkled in there. Additionally, the issue officially confirms who found Luke Skywalker's lightsaber on Cloud City following his duel with Darth Vader. So let's dive right into the story. The issue opens where we left off in the previous issue, and Tabana gas is still pouring out of the Cloud City facility, which Lando and Lobot did to buy our hero some time to get things done and get off Bespin unscathed. Captain Tranch and the Empire are vigorously trying to close the vents of the facility to stop the Tabana gas impurities from spilling out into Bespin's atmosphere, and we get a great back and forth of bickering between Tranch and a facility worker, and we learn that the only way to stop the contaminant venting is from central processing, which is down on level 109 where our homies Lando and Lobot have orchestrated this chaos. Stormtroopers have already arrived to level 109 and are set charges to blow open the door that's preventing them from getting to the central control mainframe where Lobot and Lando are. Lando tries to reach Leia on her comm, but she's still frozen in carbonite, so he tries to reach Luke, and we see that Luke and R2 are still down in the bowels of Cloud City, in the processing room, digging through massive amounts of garbage while a couple of Ugnots are also sifting through the garbage. As Lando pleads with Luke to get to level 109, Luke tells him he's still occupied with searching for his lightsaber and will make his way to Lando as soon as he finds it. Luke feels burdened with having to find his lightsaber because he believes that it's a lightsaber which makes someone a Jedi, and not being able to find his lightsaber means that he's not truly a Jedi. Luke feels completely dejected, as it seems hopeless to find his lightsaber amongst the massive amounts of garbage. We then cut back to Lando, who tells Lobot they're on their own, and asks if Lobot has any ideas to get them out of this mess. Lobot then sends mouse droids to attack and incapacitate the stormtroopers, which I absolutely loved, since mouse Mouse droids are usually shown being scared and going in the opposite direction of whatever's going on. Lando then starts cutting Lobot loose as he talks about how unrealistic it is to think that the Rebellion will defeat the Empire. I'm really digging seeing Lando's mindset at this point, as we know our man will eventually become a hero and a general of the Rebellion. We cut back to Princess Leia still frozen in carbonite as two stormtroopers are transporting her and getting ready to ship her off-world to an Imperial Security Bureau outpost, and one of the stormtroopers is trying to guess who they think the captured individual is, while the other doesn't care. We then return to Luke, still feeling completely dejected, as it seems hopeless he'll find his lightsaber amongst this garbage. Luke tries to reach out with the Force to see if he can sense his lightsaber, but he's unsure of himself, his abilities as a Jedi, and is still having difficulty honing his Force abilities and using it properly following his duel with Darth Vader. Luke then sees both Darth Vader and Obi-Wan, as well as another individual, the person we saw reach out to Luke in issue 3. Their face is still shrouded and they're holding his lightsaber, calling out to Luke and telling him to follow his destiny. Luke then has visions of the future through the Force. He sees a vision from the scene in Return of the Jedi, where Emperor Palpatine is goading Luke to take his lightsaber and strike him down, as well as a vision from the scene in Empire Strikes Back, where Luke is on Dagobah training with Yoda as Luke is about to go into the dark side cave to fight Darth Vader, but Yoda tells Luke he won't need his weapons. He then senses that Leia is in trouble, seeing her frozen in carbonite and calling out to him. Man, did I seriously love this scene. Luke then soon catches up with Lando, who's been stopped by stormtroopers, and Luke force pushes them through a window, which reminded me of when Luke was sucked out of a similar window while dueling Darth Vader. I'm sure Luke appreciated that happening to someone else this time around. Lando is shocked to see that Luke has control of the force again, since Luke had confided with Lando that he was struggling to use the force after his duel with Darth Vader. Lando then introduces Lobot to Luke and tells him that they need to hurry up and get the hell out of here, since he and Lando did something to Cloud City and things are about to get crazy. Luke tells Lando that Leia's in a big hangar where there's lots of ships, and Lando surmises that Luke is referring to the hangar on level 130 in Port Town. Lando also comments that he doesn't see Luke's lightsaber, to which Luke replies that he's realized that a Jedi isn't his lightsaber, that a lightsaber is merely a tool, and that a Jedi is someone that can use the Force for good to protect those in need 
and to fight back against the dark side. Luke goes on to say that lightsaber was his father's and that he's going to be a Jedi whether or not he sees that lightsaber again. As this is happening, we see an Ugnaught down in the processing room where the three stormtroopers from earlier have now fallen to and our little friend comes upon something very interesting. Luke's lightsaber! And I love that we finally got confirmation as to who found Luke's lightsaber as people for many years speculated that it was probably an Ugnaught that found his lightsaber in the bowels of Cloud City and that's exactly who who found it. Next, we just gotta find out how Maz Kanata got her hands on the lightsaber. Luke, Leia, and Lobot then soon arrive at the hangar in Port Town and find it crawling with Imperials. Lando is pissed that Luke didn't tell him that they were going to have to rescue Leia, to which Luke reminds Lando that he came to Bespin to rescue Lobot. And Lando is even more angered when he finds out that Leia is frozen in carbonite. The two of them try to figure out a plan, and Lando explains how to unfreeze the carbonite. Luke hastily decides to use the force and unfreeze Leia along with all of the others that had been frozen in carbonite. As the stormtroopers try to take control of the situation, Luke disarms all of the stormtroopers using the force and sends their blasters over to Leia and the others that had just been frozen in carbonite. Leia starts blasting away at the stormtroopers and asks the other individuals who are just frozen in carbonite if they'd like to join the rebellion. Lando and Luke join the fray and our heroes make quick work of the stormtroopers. They hop into an X-Wing and an Imperial Land Lambda class shuttle and start hightailing it off of Bespin. As they're leaving Bespin, Lando tells Leia that he came back to the planet to save Lobot, as well as to screw over the Empire. Lando altered the Tabana in the area down to the Molecule, which means it'll take the Empire a lot of energy and resources to process it, essentially rendering it useless to the Empire, which will hopefully result in the Empire leaving Cloud City entirely. Leia also tells Lando her reasoning for returning to Cloud City, which was to hopefully gather as much information on the carbon freezing process and how to turn it off, so that, when the time comes, Leia will be able to save Han without needing anyone to help her out. Our dear Baron Administrator then receives praise and appreciation from the individuals that he, Leia, and Luke saved from Cloud City, giving Lando his first real taste of what it's like to be a hero. Even if these folks think Lando left Cloud City to get the Rebel Alliance's help in returning to Bespin and fighting back against the Empire. Leia then informs Luke she's good to fly back to the Rebel fleet, but Luke's going to be seeking out the woman that has been reaching out to him through the Force hoping that she'll be able to provide some answers to questions he has following his duel with his father. And that's where the issue ends. I really enjoyed this issue. I loved seeing Lando get his first real taste at being a hero, seeing Luke regain his confidence, as well as learning that it was indeed an Ugnaught that found his lightsaber. Plus, with Luke mentioning that it's a woman who's been reaching out to him, I think it's safe to assume that this character is Verla, who was a Force-sensitive acolyte of Jedi Padawan Farron Barr from another Charles Soul comic series, Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. I'm very curious as to what planet Luke is heading towards as R2 was able to find a planet in his database that matched the description Luke gave him. I'd love if it's Mon Cala that they're heading to as it seems like the force sensitive individual is on an oceanic planet of sorts and that's where we last saw Verla but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But what did you guys think of this issue? Do you think Luke will be meeting up with Verla or someone else? And what planet do you think he's heading to? Also, how do you feel about an Ugnaught finding Luke's lightsaber. Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.